Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay. Amen. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. So, um, yep. Like uh, today, I'm just going to focus a little bit more on guiding you guys to go through this. So we're not going to go through, I mean, we're not going to um, do like the fact that we need to answer the complete question, right? What I mean with guiding is that we're going to say, okay, this is the concept that has been applied here. This is what you need to do when you get a question like this and, and so on and so forth. Are you following guys? Okay. So for the first part, I'm not even going to go through this in detail. I just wanted to highlight, uh, Louise asked us to just share this again. I completely forgot about it. I also forgot about the definition until um, Rosta reminded me. So guys, keep reminding me, I'm getting old now, right? So here we've got general physics, all the basic parts that they can ask. Like for example, let's just zoom it in. Determine the period of a symbol pendulum. That could be a question that can be asked in the paper three. Are you following guys, okay? It could be anything there, all right. Uh, okay, and then you can go, this is, this is just on general physics. The first part is just on general physics. For example, if you're looking at density, they can ask you to design and carry out an experiment uh, where we determine the density of a liquid, of a regular or an irregular shape. Now on this point, you see what they say, design and carry out the experiment. So sometimes you could be asked to design the, the experiment. You remember in the I mean, chemistry question, what are you going to do in order for you to determine the uh, density of an irregular shape? So you need to mention what are the, the apparatus or the instruments that you'll be using? Second, what are the procedures that you'll be following? Thirdly, after those procedures, how are you going to get to the concept of how you're going to determine the density? This is normally the conclusion. Yeah? The conclusion is normally having the concept where you now say, since I got the mass and the volume, I can now calculate the density by getting the amount of mass per volume unit that I have. And that's how I'll get it. Do you understand? All right. Now in the chemistry, we were not, we were not expecting that question because we didn't really go through that paper. But in the physics paper, I see that they're actually asking this question in the uh, alternative to practical. In the chemistry, they ask it in the, um, the uh, uh, paper two, which is the uh, structure paper. So again, just go through this, guys. Again here, plot an extension load graph. That means the y versus the, the x graph, where we're looking at the Hooke's law. And luckily, the, the, the chemist, I mean, the physics is not so much as the chemistry. Like, for example, look at the next one. Thermal physics, it's just a few points here. It's not a much, I mean, it's not a lot under thermal physics. Let me just go back. Under thermal physics, a few points there, properties of waves. Remember, I told you that some of these are having links now, and this is from the syllabus. It's not, not anything I added here. So these are links that could explain a little bit on Snell's law. So if you click on the link, it will automatically, let's just try to see if that happens. Select all of that. Okay, let's just delete that part, right? Okay, it doesn't seem like the link can open. Okay, there we go. So you can open the link. So the link could most probably get you to explaining a, a, a site that's explaining a little bit on reflection and so on. So maybe they could play the link this is the people that developed the syllabus that put these things. So since you have the soft copy, you could always go through this. Are we together? Ooh, ooh, ooh. These people are talking another language that we don't understand. Eh? <laughs> Maybe we just had a translator there or the other, or the, or the, what do they call this? Um, uh, subtitles or something like that, that we could read. Okay, so, and then, some topics are very straightforward. For example, nuclear physics. Do you see what they're asking? Nuclear physics, they are saying that under this, you will be expected to establish the half-life of any radioactive uh, active material, okay? Again, there's a link there. You could go and say, maybe the link would just explain a little bit more on how one could do that. I think there's a question around here that we can also look at. So guys, that's how it works. So if you have time, you can always go through those things over there. All right, so let's go back. That is all I wanted to say on the syllabus or the parts that are applicable to this. All right, and then the next part over here, 
I said that I put in some Cambridge papers. Now, if you look at the Cambridge papers, they have the same structure as the grade 11 paper that was written in 2020 by the first grade 11 group. You've got all these questions that you can answer nicely. These are just the same as all the other past papers that they've been working through. And then finally, you get this question here. And this is what I want us to really focus on. Are we together? They give you a scenario whereby you need to now to design the experiment. Are we together? For example, here, the student has a, a plastic bottle and say the water tips over in the class. So what happens is here's the bottle and then it tips over. Are we together? Now plan an experiment to investigate the quantity of water in the plastic bottle that is affected by its stability. So here we're talking now maybe or center of mass or center of, okay, sometimes we put it as that center of mass or grab center of gravity, center of gravity, I don't know whichever you use. So that now you now need to look at ways the mass concentrated, maybe you need to look at the angle that was happening here. And you now need to plan this experiment. You need to say what instruments or apparatus is needed, the instructions to carry out the experiment, the values that will be used to, 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 to determine the, the quantity of the water, which means it will obviously be in volumes, uh, any volume quantity like centimeter cube, millimeters or liters, I don't know, and how you will make sure that the results are accurate. There you could have maybe spill, spill this several times or maybe make sure that you, you, you use the right instruments and then graph and plot the results. So my advice to you, is that if you have this question, most probably we'd have something similar like this. I'll show you from the grade 11 uh, paper from the 2020 grade 11 paper. Try to see if you can tick each box. Did I mention all the apparatus that I need? Did I mention say maybe the instructions or the procedures that I has to be followed so that you can mark every bit of it because that is where your marks will come from. Are we following guys? Are we having any questions? If there are no questions, just give me a thumbs up if everything is clear as to how one should approach this question. Okay, All right, good stuff. I see a lot of thumbs up there. And then um, at the end of the day, what I want to show you here is with the grade 11 paper. Now this paper is for the first ever grade 11 in Namibia that are following this new syllabus. So if you go through this paper, everything else is just business as usual just have to determine from all these different parts. And then we get to the last question. You see this last question here. Again, is it not the same structure as the Cambridge paper? All right, Luis, your hand is up. You have a question. Uh, um, is it fine if we can go through the question itself? No, no, we'll go through the questions. Well, not everything, but, but again, I would, for example, maybe do this question, the one that I have here or any other from the Cambridge and you already have the solutions to this as well. I already shared it with you, but I, I would just highlight as guiding you what would be put there, what are the things that you need to look at, uh, how will this question most probably be marked, and do you understand what I'm saying? So those are everything that one needs to go through. Again, I will, I will uh, go through the question. All I wanted to show you at this point was, um, how do you need to answer this question and to show you that the reason why I put the Cambridge papers there is such that you can practice questions in this nature. Does it make sense? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So um, as I said, maybe we could start with this one now so I can guide you through a few things over here. All right. Are you ready? Are we all fine? Okay. Maybe yes. we could do some, some of this type of questions first because I think they are more applicable to uh, what one needs to look at. Are we following? Okay, right. So let me just get Emmanuel in class. All right, guys. So whenever you are having these questions, try to read through it thoroughly and see what is it that they want me to look at? What is it that they are asking for? What will my focus be? Are you following, guys? Can you all see my screen? Is the screen still clear? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, good, good, good. All right. So in this case, let's quickly look at this. All right. So what are they asking for? Here, they are asking for, um, all right, let's look at the question. 
Here we've got a converging lens. Sorry, let me get my pen. Okay. Right. So here we've got a converging lens that is used to form real images in a steel pen. Okay. Now a learner investigates the effect of the change in position of the steel pen. So what does it mean, guys? You know, whenever you've got the lens, you've got two types. Now. You've got the converging like that and then the concave lens. So they are saying, if you use this lens, right? And then you form what? A real image of a steel pen. So they want now for you to investigate the effect of changing the position of the steel pen. Now, guys, you know what we mean if we are changing the position of the steel pen, right? You need now to see what will the position be maybe between the focal point and this beyond the focal point or in between this. And do you understand what I'm saying? So that is what you need to look at. So let us then check what is it that is expected from us. But of course, we need to have some, some general um, information about these things before we can even answer the question. Does it make sense, guys? Okay, right. So now, if we look at this question, let's read further because we still have to understand the whole of it again, okay? So if we read further, it says that the list shows the apparatus available for the learner. So this is even making it a little bit easier for us now. It even shows us that this is what the learner will already have, okay? And then you look at all this that you are having there. Now the wooden ruler, uh, I mean, meter ruler, which means that this should be one meter. Then you've got a 30 centimeter ruler and it goes on like that, okay? All the equipment. Now at this point, you need to at least have an idea as to what this equipment could possibly be used for. Does it make sense, guys? Are we together? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hello, my yes, sir. people, are we together? What it could possibly yes, be sir. used for? And that will now give you guidance as to how to answer this question, okay? So, of course, you need, you have two types of, uh, what is this called? Can you also see my screen? Is it fine? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. You, you have two types of lenses. So, we're clearly dealing with a converging lens. Are we together? So, this is what a converging lens looks like. And now you also need to understand, okay, let's just do this. What will happen if it hits over here? This will start to move in that direction. That's why we say converging. Are we together? The one that is going through the center here will just go without bending. There will be no bending over there. So we have that idea in mind. Are we following, guys? Okay. So if we go further from here, let us then explain. Because now we plan the experiment. Okay, let me just clear this. Okay. So we plan an experiment to investigate how the height of the image depends on the distance between the steel pen and the lens. So basically, generally there's a lens, okay? Now the steel pen now, is it on this side of the lens or on that side of the lens? And that also has to be determined by the type of image that you're forming. Are we together? Now you have to change the distance of that and now you have to explain it according to that. Is that making sense, guys? Okay. Now, what is expected from you are these few, few points that we have here. Draw a label diagram to show the arrangement of your apparatus that you're having, okay? Explain briefly how you would carry out the investigation, including the readings that would be taken. Here, the readings, you don't need to be specific. So many centimeters, no. You just need to say you'd use this meter ruler to take, for example, the distance between this and that, and state one key variable that should, I mean, that would be controlled to ensure a fair test. Now, that is where the concept comes in, okay? So now, the first thing that we need to understand is, you need now to explain all those things. So let me keep that in view, okay? So the first thing is, once you have put everything down, like you have put the steel pen down, you put the lens, you need to label them. I cannot just come here and draw a lens like this without labeling. I need to say, this is now my converging, say, lens. Are we together? Is that making sense? So it's very important that I label it. Let's say I put here and I say, now nah, this here is my pen, for example, or I could have it upside down. I need to label that this is the steel pen. 
So if you are making notes, just say that labeling is crucial in this question. Yeah? So we need to be able to label. Are you following, guys? Okay. All right. And then, of course, once you're done with the labeling, of course, for this to happen, you now need to put your drawing in, in, in perspective. Okay. So let me just explain in general how the drawing would work for this particular question. The, good, the thing is, we do not know what kind of question we'll get. So let me get the ruler, okay? So I'll explain the basics of convey, I mean, converging lenses. So I will first now put now my principal axis over here, all right? So that would be there. And then we need to put the lens down, okay? So we would have the lens almost in half. So I'll try my best to draw it nicely. So this is what the lens would look like, okay? Now we know that whenever we are drawing our ray diagrams, right? Okay. And then we are drawing this. We need to draw straight lines to this. Okay. And the straight lines that we are drawing here, let me put it like this in the lens over here. Uh, my lens is not very accurate. I don't want to spend too much time over here. All right. So once I draw that, assuming that this thing goes through, through there as well. So now I need to draw my ray diagrams. So the first one I could draw here is to come like this from here and it touches over there. Once that happens, I now need to understand what will happen to this, this uh, what is this uh, lens that I'm dealing with? What's going to happen to this lens now is that this guy will now bend since we are converging. So it will bend something like this. Are you following guys? All right. And then this guy that is going through the center, I'm going to put it through the center. Maybe we use a different color. Maybe we could use the black. So it comes like this through the center. Are you following? Now that one doesn't bend. Now the concept that you need to understand here from your theory, and that is what we are testing, is that when you have the object over here, okay? So let's say this one, what color can I use? Let's just use the black. If this is the object, okay? So let's say this was now the steel pen object over here. And then this object on the other side of the lens would look like this, are we together? So it would something like this over here. Are you following guys? All right. And in this case, maybe the head is over here. This is the bottom part. This is the top part of the steel pen. Are we together? So now you just draw it. How should I put it down? just a general shape like that okay that's the first part and now you now need to go further and to say okay if i have this lens over here and i make a mark over here and this is my say f on this side i'm gonna have the same one on the other side the same length from that to make that my f is one all together and let's say i make this my f2 all right and then on this side this will now be my F2. So what I'm trying to show here is that I want to see what will happen to the, I mean, the object here, because that's what you're trying to test. Take the object and then you try to move it between this point, between this point. So maybe I come and I put the object over here. What's going to happen to the image on the other side? That is what you want to do. Are we together? So if the object is now put here on say F2, for example, it will create a real image that is inverted, are we following? That, that has the same size if you do that. So now on this case, this will have the same size if it's there. What is going to happen if you move that object now in here, like this part over here, okay? Let us focus on this part. If I move the object here, which means I move it closer to the lens, what is going to happen on the other side? Then this will also move further away. What is happening? This is becoming smaller and smaller, and then the other one is becoming bigger and bigger. So now the object, I mean, the, uh, the image is enlarging. Are you together? And then if you go further and then you go and put here, what's going to happen is that these guys will not meet. So this will go like this, and this will be parallel to that, which means now you are forming a virtual image on the other side. However, if you now extrapolate them on this side, then they will meet on that side. Now, again, guys, this will now include a lot of your, um, what is this? A lot of your theory behind it. What I can do is I had, um, 
I had a, a, a PowerPoint that I pre uh, presented once, I could share those ray diagrams with you so that you can see it, okay? Is that making sense, guys? So I can just share those ray diagrams with you so that you can see how it works, okay? Um, so that it just refreshes your mind a little bit, okay? Does it make sense, guys? So the idea here was just to show you how you can answer the question. You can draw it as once, and then you say, what's going to happen if it moves closer to this? And then the other one would come closer to the other side. Sorry, guys. Let me just get Joshua in here. All right. My screen is covered again. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. So that's the idea. So some of the points that are mentioned there, as you are going to write it here, is to go back to this and say, explain briefly how you would carry out the experiment. So you would set up the lens. You'd make sure that you measure this with your ruler. Then you make sure that the distance that you have here, basically you're going to get two points yeah, so that you can run around. The reason why you are using the F2 and the F is, this could be, say, a focal point, your second focal point, for example, okay? Now you want to move between these two points and see how the object affects the movement on the other side. That's why you're putting two points. So you can clearly explain that in this part to say, I'm going to put two points, known sides on one on either side of the lens, and then I'm going to start taking the readings as I'm moving the object and see how that movement is affecting the image or you know, the formation of the image on the other side. Now, in the last part, whenever they are asking you to ensure a fair test on anything, all you need to do there is to repeat the experiment with, say, other positions with a steel pin to see if it gives you the same concept. For example, are we together? Does it make sense, guys? OK. And then the key variable here will be the height of the steel pen, are we together? Especially when it's enlarging or it's becoming smaller or is it virtual or is it real? Those are the key variables, okay? The focal length of the converging lens is also very key. So Luis, I cannot answer it completely, but I can give you guidance as to how you can answer this. Maybe we can look at another one, also similar type of question. All right. Unfortunately, we don't have another one in the Namibian paper, so we need to go to the Cambridge paper and then we can look at another one. Let's say to the end of this. OK. All right. Let's hold on here. OK. Here it's on electricity. Are you following, guys? OK. So when you have to do this question, go down to the bottom part of the paper. You see that this is from 2017. Do you see that footer that we have here? Page, I mean, uh, paper from 2017, the solutions are there, all right? I just don't have them here with me now, but you can have them on your screen, yeah? Um, like the, 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 the WhatsApp, on the WhatsApp group, I've shared it over there. So you can go to the 2017, and then what do you do on 2017? You go to question five, for example, are you following? And then on question five, then you'll start answering the question from there, all right? So, can I just do this one question just to demonstrate this concept again, then we move over to the other questions. Is that okay? Yes, yes. Thumbs up if that's okay. All right. The idea that I'm trying to give you here is just to teach you how to answer this question. We don't know which concept they will test tomorrow. Okay. Here we've got electricity. So the student wants to investigate whether the resistance of the wire depends on the material which means what type of wire do you have from which the wire is made of? Are we together? Of course, the concept we know, the resistance is dependent on the length of the wire, the diameter of the wire, the type of the wire, and the temperature at which that wire is then, then functioning. Are you following, guys? So in our concept, we know that it is dependent, but it's an investigation. You want to investigate if that is the case. So now the resistance represented by capital letter R over there is given here in this equation. Are we following? Now, we, this also comes from our equation. V is king. Eh? Then you can have your IR or RI. doesn't matter. This can be interchangeable. So you've got the following apparatus. You've got an ammeter. You've got a voltmeter. You've got a micro screw gauge. You've got a power supply that can go up to three volts. You've got a variable resistor switch connecting leads or connecting cables, okay, or connecting wires. 
and then you've got your wire of different materials. So this is where you're going to test your resistance. Okay, so if you are given the apparatus already, I see that in the AS level, they don't even give you the apparatus. They want you to come up with them. Ne? If you are given the apparatus already, make sure that each and every one of those apparatus are being used in the experiment. We're not just going to give you just for the sake of, you know, of just for fun. Are you following guys? Okay, so now what are you going to do just by the concept? You're going to have your power supply. You're going to have your connecting wires. And then you can have whatever you are testing, that wire that you're testing over here, away, the resistance. So you need to connect some sort of voltmeter around that resist, um, the wire that you're connecting so that you can look at the voltage. The current will be determined by the amount of voltage that you're having that you're pushing. And then the current can then be measured with the ammeter. It needs to be only in series and uh, the voltmeter can be in parallel or across the component that you're measuring. And then some of the things that you're looking at is that it's the type of the wire. So to make it make it fair, you make sure that all the lengths are the same. It is being operated under the same temperature. <clears throat> These are some of the points that you can mention, meaning that the diameter or the cross-sectional area of the, of the wires are the same so that you make sure the test is fair. You have all of them constant. So if you have an aluminum wire, for example, that is 10 centimeters, then the copper wire should also be 10 centimeters. That's what I'm trying to show here. I don't know. Those are the things that I can think of as I'm looking at the question. Are you following, guys? So now if you are planning the experiment, now you plan the experiment to investigate some few things now, okay? Sorry, guys. Let me just um, put this uh, WhatsApp of mine. Um... Okay, maybe I can just close it. I don't think anyone would be WhatsApping me now for anything important. Okay, so we plan an experiment to investigate whether the resistance of the wire depends on the material, and you should then be able to do the following four points. Draw a diagram for the circuit and use this to determine the resistance of the wire. Make sure that we have an ammeter, we have a voltmeter, sorry guys, connected at the right places. Of course, the micrometer will not be in the diagram, by the way, why do we have a micrometer there? To measure what? Why do you think we've got a micrometer? Because I'm not going to put it in the circuit. Are we together? Uh, why do we have a micrometer? The, yes. So why the what the length of the wire or something? I'm not sure. So something to do with the wires. Is it not the thickness? The thickness, the cross-sectional area. The micrometer measures some things that are very small. So it's for the cross-sectional area of the wire to ensure that they are the same, okay? So we know why we're using it, okay? So the length of the wire, you could simply just use a ruler, né? but they don't give me a ruler there, but you could just say, make sure that all the wires are the same length, okay? And then we've got the power supply that needs to be in the circuit, the variable resistor. So you need to have something like this where you can adjust the resistance and then so that you can see, and then a switch and connecting leads. Okay, so you, your diagram here should include all of that. So you could draw the power source, label them, tell me that this can go up to three volts. You can even say zero to three volts, okay? Zero just means that it's off, are we together? So the power supply, it could even be, uh, uh, it doesn't even tell you whether it's a direct power supply or whatsoever. Even if you go and draw something like this and say, this can be between three or whatsoever. Maybe it's just for you to enable that you can adjust the, the, the what is this? The, the, the power, are we following guys? So you have your power supply and then you've got your connecting ones, something like this. You've got an M meter somewhere there. And then you've got the space. Maybe you can even have your connecting leads there with, with the thong here, the crocodile thong here. And then you can just show, they don't show you those things there, but you can just say the wire is there, okay? Because you need to show where the wire is connected, right? All right, and then you've got the wire that you tested, and then you've got a voltmeter around the wire. And then remember, we've got a switch, could be open or closed, we're not specifying on that. What else do we have? What else did I leave out? A variable resistor. Where do you think we'll put the resistor? Across the, the cell. Does the resistor come across the... Mm-hmm. 
Where will we put the resistor, guys? Do we need the variable resistor for us to determine? Mm -hmm. Where will you put it? Will you put it somewhere here? Do you think you need to put it on the wire or you put it after the wire? So this one, you could put it anyway. Oh, and this has to be in series, are we together? Because what you're going to do is you're going to try to see if you put it before the wire, you are ensuring that this is the amount of resistance that you're causing here. Therefore, only so much of the current is going through there. So the variable resistor is there so that you can basically control the current. Are we together? All right, because what are you investigating? You're investigating what? Whether the type of the wire, right? The resistance is dependent on the type of the wire. Are we together? All right, so you can draw it up there. For me, the variable resistor, you can be having anyway, because you're gonna adjust it, okay? So you've drawn it, so we've done that part. So you get your marks for that. Explain briefly how you would carry out the experiment, including the measurements to be taken, okay? What did I forget here? I also need to label, right? Say three volts there. This labeling, the fact that I have them drawn like this in its electronic, I mean the electronic or the electric symbols, I do not have to go and write there that this is the cell or this is the power supply because I know from the electric symbols that that's what it represents. But if I draw, for example, just the lens like this, I need to go and tell you that this is the lens. I need to go and say that this is the, the, the steel or the, or the nail, you understand? So some common ones, you don't need to do that. So now we need to explain how we're going to do this. We need to make sure that we measure the amperes, the voltage, and we measure the potential difference and the current, and then we can calculate. Because your resistance, you need the voltage and your current. So you're going to explain, how am I going to get the voltage? I'm going to connect the voltage across the appliance that I'm testing. And then I will measure the current that that is getting I would together from the ammeter. And then I would then take the, say those voltage, divide that with current here, and then I'll determine the resistance. So in other words, you need to explain how you're going to do that, uh, that formula, are we together? And then you state the key variables that would control this, are we together? So from the key variables that will control this would now be your voltage and your current because they are involved in the calculation. Are you following guys? And then they say, draw a suitable table and a column and heading so that you can show your readings. So when you have to draw the table, suitable table, okay? So now you can say, all right, maybe you've got a table like this. And then you can say the type of wire. So you can say type one, type two, for example. And then you can say the length of the wire. Maybe you can say 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters. And then you can say the voltage that you get over there that you measure for that wire. And then you would have your, say your current of that. And then the last column, you can say the resistance. So that it shows that once I have these readings, I can calculate the resistance. But guys, I do not have readings. All we want is just the table with the column headings. Are we together? And maybe the row headings, that's it. So if they say the column headings, all you need to do as a matter of fact is just to have the columns. So just as I say, the type of the wire, the voltage, the length of the wire, the resistance and so on, and then the resistance here. They just want to see the column headings. You get your marks for that. Are you following? And then they say, show that how this can be displayed in the reading. So you need to show it like a table and then you explain further. Very important guys, you always have to say, repeat this with a second type of wire. So after you have explained the experiment of what you need to do, you say, maybe you label your steps one, two, three, four, five. You say, repeat step one to step five with a different type of wire. You understand? So that will now be your step six that you say, repeat the same thing with a different type of wire. Are we together? And then you can even say, repeat with different voltage since your voltage can be between zero and three. Maybe you tried it with one, then you can try it with two, you can try it with three. Repeat with different voltage, try to see, make sure that you, I mean, you can even repeat the entire experiment with a different length now and different diameters. 
Maybe first you were using only 10 centimeters. In the second experiment, you are using 20 centimeters for all the wires. Maybe in the first one, your cross-sectional area was this small. Now it's this big. All of those concepts. Yeah? And then you can use that. Then the reason why you're saying with different cross-sectional areas is to show that you are going to use the micro screw gauge for that purpose. Are we together to measure the thickness of the wire? So your table, your columns should be, for example, like I said, the type of wire, the voltage, the current, and then of course the resistance. What else do you always need to include in the table? For example, if I put here voltage, I put slash and the unit, I put the voltage. Are you together? That's how you represent scientific tables. I hope you're making pointers here. Nah? If you put current here, I would say slash, and then I would say current will be, what units do I use? Amps for current, okay? So I can maybe write amps out or just the A. Are we together? For the resistance, you now need to go and put your ohms for the resistance. So the table must also show your units. So you would have your voltage, your amps, and your uh, ohms. Are we together? Next to the description of that. I think I've said everything that you need to know around compiling this. Are you following guys? Mm -hmm. If I've left out anything, if you consult your, your what is this, the, the solutions I gave you, you might have something similar. If I've left out anything, you'll see it over there. So this was on electricity. For interest sake, let's see what else they have asked in the other papers. So the first one, remember it was on, 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 on what was the first one? The first on no, not the lens, the, the one that we looked in the chemistry paper here. Um, okay. I can't remember something here. Oh, yeah, center of gravity. Okay, but anyhow, then you have that question. Let's look for interesting what else they ask. Mm, I hope it's not going to be something that will be repeated. Okay, student. Okay, here's thermal physics. Okay, so there's thermal physics over there. Let's look at the next paper. So you can have a bit of training for everything. Right here, student is investigating the factors that affect the size, which is a hole for a ball made dropped into sand, plan the experiment to investigate the size of the uh, crater. No, no, this, what is this? I'm not understanding. What are they trying to test here? To investigate the factors that affect the size of the Crater, uh, the crater hole a ball makes when it is dropped into sand. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay, so here we're talking about gravity. So basically, you, you have something like this, right? So you've got the sand here, and then that ball is dropped. So then it will make that shape there. So that is called, I learned a new word now. Okay, so I think they put the hole here. So what will affect that? The size of the ball, the gravitational pulling force, are we together? And also maybe the height might not be affected if you uh, take it as you neglect resistance. So again, try to get the concept from the question. All right, so for interest sake, again, let's see some of the solutions are here. I'm just not sure which question we're doing. Oh, here's the question on M meter. Mm, oh, you see what they're doing here. They're showing you, show your power supply, your emitter, your voltage, your resistance, and then your variable resistor, correct symbols that are used there. Did you put the emitter like that? Did you put the voltmeter like that? Are we together your res variable resistor? Measure the potential difference and the current and calculate the resistance. So again, that's the next mark. How will I determine the resistance after I get the voltage and the current? I can measure them and calculate the resistance. Repeat there again, you understand, for the other type of wire. And then some of the key variables with the length and the diameter. And then they show you here what other things you can use. Different volt, I mean, different lengths and all that. Your table, again, you should have those important things in your table, the voltage, your current, your resistance, because they need those three to calculate that. The units are there. I think we've covered everything, isn't it? Now, do you see how the marks are awarded as you are talking about it in your paragraph? Okay, I think we can leave that question here. Right, so 
let us then look into some concepts of things that you would like to look at. I think, can I suggest that, can we look at the half-life question? Maybe in the practical concept. I'm not sure where it was, but I'm sure I had one half-life question. Has anyone gone through those papers and looked at it and can maybe help us to find? Again, ha, ha, ha. This is the setup that you will have for that question. Mm. That electricity question, you see that? Mm. This will be the setup. What will happen here in this setup? Ah, why is the pen doing that? What will happen in this setup is they want to hear they are testing how the length affects. So this crocodile clip will maybe be at T, at S, at R, at, and it changes. So it's getting longer and longer. So it's the same thing. You see where the uh, resistor is? This will be the ammeter. This will be the voltmeter. Are you together? And again, you see the power supply? You can just throw it like that, especially if you are able to adjust it now. And you see the table that we have over there? There's the potential difference, which is your voltage and your current. And then together, if you take this over that, you can calculate the resistance. So this is what that setup would look like. Okay, so I'm looking for the question on half-life. Uh, this is still on, because it's something we haven't really looked at. This is momentum, I mean moment, sorry. That is fine. Um, what is this? Okay, it still goes on from there. Hoops flow. Determining there's some speed thing here. Rosta, I saw this question very late. You asked me something on the WhatsApp thing. We were still looking for a daycare for our son, uh, our second born. He's not happy with the school way. He's, I think the Rado Park private school is too big for him. <laughs> so, I'm in the sense. car. Yeah, we put them there because it's close to where Mem is. Mm. It makes it easy, the logistics. But anyhow, um, I saw a half-life question. There's center of uh, determining center of mass. It's a bit of thermal physics. Don't say I didn't see this. Um, was it in the Cambridge paper? No, man. I think it was a Namibian paper. Um, yeah, again, refraction. That's the wave part of things. Again, guys, the questions, the answers are there. Here. Yeah. They ask us to determine, I mean, to graduate, I mean, uh, uh, calibrate a thermometer. Né? I think we also had this in theory. Né? You've got a thermometer, you've got ice to determine the zero degrees, you've got this pure water that you want to boil so that it gets the steam so that you can determine the 100 degrees. So from the zero degrees, determine the 100 degrees, and then you would then calibrate it equal intervals there. Are you together? Again, just for just look at the way they have explained this question in the solutions, but that's what it is. Um, and then they're drawing a cooling curve then. Eh? I can already see that it's a cooling curve. I don't know, like, you know, coming down, you understand? So your solid, your liquid, I mean, not your solid, but your, your gas, and then the gas condensates into the liquid and becomes a solid. Most probably that's what you'll get from, from plotting these points from the table here. So do you see how they are testing the theory? Né? Okay, so um, this is electricity. Voltage is there. There's a screw gauge. I think that also calibrates a thermometer. And then you've got this situation over here. The GM counter, this is nuclear physics again. You know how that works, right? Anything yes, that goes in there, I think Mr. Simba explained, whatever it detects some radiation, it will give you a reading. Sometimes even without anything going in there, if there's a reading that's because of background radiation, again, there's density. I'm just trying to look for something. Yep, I think it's this question. Yeah. Okay, so we're here. What they expect us now to draw is now the half-life graph. Okay, so maybe we can do this one together. Are you all there? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. So uh, if you have this, I, I'm, I'm just doing it because um, 
it's a question whereby one might not always know how to approach it. Né? So it's just trying also to give you some pointers and so on so that we can, we can go through this thoroughly. Okay. So again, we need to have some form of background. Né? Are you following guys? Of, of the whole thing on, on radioactivity. Now I'm sure Mr. Simba has really done justice on radioactivity. I actually told him I would like you to finish that topic with them so that I don't teach it. I don't know how far you've gone, what you've covered, what needs to be done and all that. It's just that my drawing might not be very accurate. Yeah? It might not be very accurate, but I will try my best to, to make it <laughs> on, on, the, on the screen. It's not so good to, to, to draw these things, but yeah, let's see what we can do. Okay, so yep, radioactivity. So we want to see how these things unfold, okay? So in this experiment, it was performed to determine the half-life. Let me just get my pen. So the aim was to determine the half-life, okay? By the way, what is half-life, guys? Let us first start there with the definition so we understand what do we mean when we talk about the half-life? So this means that the, the amount of or how long it takes for the isotope to decay. Mm -hmm. To decay to what now? Someone help me. Anyone else, please help us with Half-Life? Who knows? Just Even just an idea. If you have an idea, we'll correct you. Don't worry. If it's not right, then we'll, we'll correct you. Sir? Okay. Yes. Um, the half-life is the time it takes for half mm -hmm. the atoms of a radioactive isotope to decay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. So, in other words, this is what it means. What is the period it takes for half of that to, to decay? So, let's say I had maybe 10 of the radioactive, now. Nah? So for them to become half, I need to divide by two to five. So we want to see how long did it take to come to five? So whatever days it took, whatever seconds it took, that's the half-life. And again, this is, they have to be divided by two, 2.5. So that's what it means, are we together? Now, when we draw a graph, the purpose we draw a graph is that we can determine anything else. So if we have a graph, generally it looks like that. So it started there, maybe half of that was there. So if this was the time at half, what was the time? So even with the graph, it can go and determine any time or any at, at any time, what are the amount of radioactivity that I would have over there, are we together? And this is just for me to also predict how long it will take. Okay, so we have a general concept of half-life. That is perfect. So now the background radiation was obtained by switching the, 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 the GM, this is named after the guy who, who, who actually made it. All right, all right. And then the rate before we start the experiment. Okay, all right. Now it was found to be 60 counts per minute. All right, so what does this mean? This is the background radiation that you have over there. Now the apparatus was then set and the activity of the disintegrating gas was recorded at regular intervals. Are you following guys? Okay. So now here we are shown that after 40 minutes, this is what we have here. We can clearly see that this is 180. And after 60 minutes, uh, after 60 minutes, just hold on. It's an unknown number. I hope it's not someone that's stuck over there. Uh, okay, just a minute. Okay. I'll call back later. All right, so here I can see it's 122.50. It's not so easy to see this there, but I mean, you can see the one, you can see the two, you can see the two point there. You understand? So this is what the count will be after 60 minutes. This is what the count will be after your um, uh, 40 minutes. Uh, hello, Mr. Frank. I'm in a class hello. now. Yes, okay. can, can I call you back, ma'am? Or SMS if it's urgent, okay. Thank you. Right, so now this is what we have. Now they are saying the corrected activity of the actual uh, background is then subtracted. You know how it works, right? How you can subtract. Does anyone know how it works? 
I think there were a lot of those questions in your papers as well. So the, the background activity, you constantly have to, to subtract from that. Are you following, guys? So please repeat. Here they are saying in B, yeah? Okay, mm -hmm. the A just shows the, uh, the, 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 the count that you got, yeah? record them in the space provided. So what you'll do is you'll just come and at 40, you'll come and record now this over here. Yeah? And then this one was at, um, what was it? At 60. So you'll come and you'll record this at 60. So now what we're saying is in order to find this, how do they find those values over there? That's what I'm saying. So from here, how did we get to the 50? From here, how did we get to this? How are we gonna get to this? How did we get to this? So you need to look at the information. If you look at this, what information is given here? This is what we mean, the, 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 the background that this that was found. Are we following? 60. So how did they get here? They said 500 minus the 60. I mean, 560 minus the 60 gave them that, isn't it? Okay. So if you do the same thing here, minus the 60 here will give you that. So you do the same thing, 180 minus the... 60 will give you what? 120, isn't it? To keep consistency, you can do that. So the 122.50 minus then the 60, I don't know who has a calculator there. Okay, this is already given, sorry. So this you have to minus the 60 from there. So what will happen? How much do you get? 91.25 minus the 60? 31.25. Yeah. Okay, so this is how you get that. So that's your two marks. Okay, maybe one mark for this two, one mark for those two. Okay, so that is correct. Are we following? So this is what I'm saying. The corrected activity will be the actual activity after the background radiation is subtracted. So they're actually telling you how to finish this table or how to fill all the missing pieces. So the corrected activity, which is where? This is a corrected activity. How do I find it? After I take the corrected activity will be the actual activity minus the radiated one. So we'll get it like that. I think this part is still easy. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Do you have any questions here? Okay, so that is okay. So we go to the next one now. So what is going to happen is you're gonna take that graph from the previous question and you're going to plot the graph. So you will have this here, this graph here. Let me just write it nicely. Okay. So now you would have, what were the values? This was 180.00. And then we, when we subtracted, what did we say? It was 120 here, ne? Are you following? And then what was this one? 122.50 from above. And then the sequel you said this was 31.25. Okay, so you're going to check from this one, which is the X axis, which is the Y axis. Are we together? But now you know that you can't determine from that. At first glance, you always need to have your time. And we know the time is independent and that must come on the Y axis. I mean the X axis, sorry. Now on the Y axis, this is what I wanted to say. You now need to go and see which one will come on the Y axis in case if they didn't label for you, which one will you, do you think will come on the Y axis? Is it the activity here or the corrected activity? Which one do you think will come on the Y axis? Corrected activity. Yes, Correct. why? Because you're removing the background radiation. Eh? So you are getting the exact one. So the corrected activity. So what's going to happen is you're gonna plot this graph, the Y versus the X. So at zero, it will be maximum. And that is how it disintegrates. And then you plot that on your graph, are we together? So if this is your graph at zero, it will be 500 up there. And after 20, it will come down. But do you see what's happening when we are talking about half-life? If you look at these values here, sorry, now it's deleting what I don't want to delete. From 500, oh, sorry, from 500 to 250 is exactly half. Né? So you are halving 250. Are you following guys? Are you together? 
So you are supposed to half, if this was exact, then this would now be 125, half of that. It's supposed to go like that. Are you following guys? So that's the idea. But, but of course, this is an experiment. So it's not always accurate. So now, once you have that, like, okay, they were kind enough to give us this. So they, they tell us corrected activity against time. So if you have this, you would start here with the 500. After the 20 minutes, uh, I think after the 20 minutes was what? Was it 100 and something? I can't remember. It was 250, yeah? So 250 would be here in the middle. And after the 40, it was 120. 22 something so this will maybe be somewhere around here and then after the 60 oof, guys i can't remember can i quickly check after the 60 the 60 seconds will be 62 then 30 so i'll just estimate like because i'm halving them there okay so now after the 60 uh we said the 60 was somewhere around here uh I'll just get my pen out uh, the 60 would be somewhere here and then the 80 maybe the 100 and then it keeps going down like that so in other words your graph would look something like this so this is what i wanted to show in case they ask you radioactivity something like that so you see how easy it is to to get the corrected activity by removing the the, the background radiation but at the same time if you come out of that exam without having this idea or have I, without knowing that you'll say, yo, 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 that question on Half-Life was very, very tough. But you see how, how straightforward this is? Yes, sir. Isn't it? So again, they don't test much on it. So now the next question is they want us to determine the Half-Life. Are we together? So D, what is the Half-Life of this uh, alpha emitting gas? How will you determine the Half-Life? You need to look at, I started with 500. The count was at 500. Half of 500 will be 250. So you're gonna go to 250 and then you're going to find the time. Half-life is having a unit of, I mean, sorry guys, the unit for half-life are the units we use for time. Now, since we're using minutes here, so what do you do? This was 500, come to half of that, Half of that is 250. And then if you look at the value here, how what's the time there? It's 20 minutes. As easy as that. Couldn't you have scored eight out of eight for this question? Mm -hmm. yeah. But you could have easily also scored zero yes. out of eight if you didn't know the if you didn't know how to apply this, isn't it? Yes, sir. You understand? So that, that is what I'm trying to show you here. So again, guys, this is just some of some of the examples. Of course, I'll not be able to go through all the questions, but if you go to the, to your WhatsApp, you will see that uh, I think it's only one one of my papers that will corrupt. It didn't want it to open. I think this thing is blocking your view. It's actually warning me that it's blocking your view. So I want to show you something. I'll stop sharing this. So I show you something. Um, just give me a second. Hey guys, I broke my cable and my phone is on 2%. So I don't know how to charge my phone tonight. <laughs> but anyhow, um, let me just quickly share the screen so that I show you how you need to use uh, the solutions I gave you now. Okay, so that's now on the WhatsApp. So I think you can all see my WhatsApp now now. Yes, sir. Right? Yes, so sir. let's say we go in here, for example. Okay, let's take this one. So here, this is the solutions to the Namibian papers. Of course, I haven't downloaded mine yet, but uh, I mean, I already have it on the PC. I don't know why I want to download it. Okay, anyway, uh, let's just cancel that. And then I share my PC screen. Is this my screen? Let me share my screen. Okay, so if you download that, that would look something like this. Okay, so do you see my screen? Yes, sir. So what I tried to do here was to show you, okay, this is the paper, 2020. Okay, paper three, this is the paper they wrote. So you have the detailed answers there. And then for each of the papers, I did the same thing. Like the only thing I also put here was that this paper, because I was a little bit behind time, I didn't answer it. Yet. The 2020, 
the ordinary level paper. I did not answer it, so I left it for practicing. And then, um, yo, Ms. Mugunda is, is tempting me here with food, ne? <laughs> What's up, <sir? laughs> Okay, just hold on a bit, because I told her I'll be done around eight o'clock. Okay, but anyway, okay, I just want to show you how it works. So that's not answered, then the next, next paper is just continuing normally. Okay, so normally you'd have your 2019 uh, paper, paper three, go through the questions. You'll see it's only question one and question five that deals with physics. The other questions are probably chemistry questions. That's why we don't have them in there. Are you together? <laughs> I'm sharing that same sentiment with you, Ne. But anyhow, <laughs> so here we've got 2018, the same thing again. So please go through that. Um, and it's in the sequence. I tried to put it in the sequence as per the questions yeah? and try to label them. Here, you had to draw some diagram there. You can go through that. Oh, here is the question we're doing now. Our half-life was not very accurate, but here, yep, you see that. Mm -hmm. That's what the graph needs to look like. Uh, oh, they got the 20 minutes. That's what we had. This is the values that we're putting in there. So again, guys, the, it's there. So you can use it around there. So if you have any questions, I'll at least be up until 10 o'clock latest. Né? Then you can still ask questions of something that is not clear. I advise you to use two, um, what is this called? Two um, screens, for example, your phone with a laptop or a, or a tablet or two phones. Maybe on one, you've got the questions open. On the other one, you've got the solutions open. Or you can even copy them, write them down. Guys, for me, it's the concept. Understand the concept so that you can apply. These questions, you can't really study them. Yeah? You just need to know what to do. Do I know how to title a graph, for example? Yeah? So the titling of a graph will always be y-axis versus your x. What is my y-axis? My y-axis is the height, and my x-axis will be the time. So the title of this graph will now be the height against or height versus time. You understand? Those are the type of things. So you would now go and say, okay, from the graph, you want to say how long will it take for the 85 uh, centimeters? So what will you do? Whatever the graph looked like, you go to 85, go, maybe the graph was like, maybe like this, I don't know. Where it touches the graph, you come down and you read that time. I study like that. I just need to know how to apply the concept because the graph, I will draw from a table. I'll probably have a table over here. You understand? So the time element is there, the height element is there, all the heights there with the time. Do you see all of this will have the same time, ne? the cell phone over here. So you have to put in that one, most probably you get the difference between the two and then you can put it in and then you can put it together. Are we together guys? So this is for me to show you the concept. So please go through the questions just for you to get familiar with what they're asking. Here they want us to get density. All right, they gave us the dimensions. Normally what happens in these questions are where they gave us the dimensions, like for B, that information for B will be missing on the table. You see C, D, E, A, everything has, are we together? I mean, except for E again. So they'll give us the dimensions to get the area of the base multiplied by the height will give me the volume. So that's how I'll get the volume, the mass. How will I determine the mass? They tell us it's the same material. Maybe they gave us the density of that. The mass I can determine from the formula of saying the mass over the volume. Are you following, guys? Okay. So, guys, as I said, I will be on standby at <laughs> least until 10 o'clock. I don't want you to sleep so late. <laughs> yes, yes, Swain. Always with Oros. Ne? That's even Ms. Muguna's favorite. Ne? <laughs> so, let me go and enjoy my dinner. And then I'll be on standby, guys. Any questions you have, ne? <laughs> All right. I'm only feeling tired now as we're end, uh, ending our exams. Do we have any burning question, issue, suggestion, whatever it is before I say bye for now? Mm -mm. Awesome. Please go through the questions. I know you can apply. Just work on the application and do not sleep too late, guys, ne? How a chance to oh, relax. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, chance. No, the tummy will run away. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Ce lucruri dispra. <laughs> okay. All right, guys. So, all right. Bye. All the best for tomorrow's paper. And Thank please, you. candidate, Thank candidate you. numbers, ne? Candidate numbers. Latest report card. Okay. All right, guys. So we know it's Bye. No, 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 no. You just sent me a picture. Oh, okay. Mm, or just even just text your candidate number. Say your full name. All right. Bye, guys. I'll see you when we see. Listen, 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 listen. I need your help, but I'll talk to you over the weekend. Ne? I want to create some content for Edward. But after the exams are over, sometime next week, most probably over the weekend, next weekend, or some way, I will need some of you which will now be sitting with maybe iPad or phones. Some will be captured in the class. Some will be just to show what we do. So I need your help on that, please. <laughs> Musico, your price is yeah. too expensive. Yebo. What is that? What is that? It's a cafe or liquor. It's over. Ah, guys, we can always do it sort of like an opening thing. Let us rest, guys. Are you not tired? Tired <laughs> of books, yes. <laughs> But not tired of other things. Okay, let us let us talk about it when we resume. Ne? We owe you that. Okay. Es muy ons es ni muy ni. Yeah. Ons ons kan. What what do you guys say? As as we we are moving. As we are moving. What is as this? As we are going. As we are going. going. As we are going. <laughs> <laughs> okay, guys, enough, enough now. Before Ms. Mugunda comes into the office, bye. <laughs> okay, bye, bye. Ciao. All right. Bye, sir. Bye.